interesting one to round out the day. We've had truly one of the most spectacular days so far for European Call of Duty here at the World League. We've had underdog games, we've had victors, we've had crazy comebacks. So far, so good. Millennium Pulse could be a different story. Yeah, Millennium Pulse going into this, uh, we've obviously got our winners, but... That's a prediction, and at the moment, predictions are out the window because today, like like you said, I mean, Machine said it is an underdog day. Yeah. It's something for me which is um, very relevant at the moment. But is Pulse? I mean, Pulse is literally underdogs of underdog. Like it's, they're, they're we, we, do you I know mean, what they are? They're in the top ten teams in Europe, but they're up against such yeah. strong components. It literally is like David and Goliath. Yeah, but in, I mean, to put it into perspective. If you were to come into this one before the standings existed, you would quite literally put Millennium at one yeah. and Pulse at ten. Yeah, like that's that's that's, that's where fair the, to say, yeah. and that's not that's not kind of almost a dig at Pulse. It's more, I just think the other team. I mean, Pulse, I'd say Pulse and TCM almost kind of towards the lower tier, but TCM have just stepped it up so yeah. much. I, I hope Pulse, Pulse can do the same. The thing is, is I think Pulse and TCM are technically in the same category. They qualify the same way. Yeah, they come through with the same storyline. New new names, new you know new blood to the Call of Duty competitive world. However, t they've had two very different starts, very contrasting starts. The game against Pulse is a vote. The games against Pulse have only gone one way. The mm. games against TCM, it's always been like, I actually don't know who's going to win this. Like, yeah. you, you, as a caster, you have this la like, lack of faith in their opponent. And that's a good sign for the things to come for TCM. So far, not present uh, in their games against Pulse. So maybe, just maybe, today's the day that they really do live up to it and we do see <laughs> the underdog day completed. <laughs> Let's not forget that if they win this one, I might, do I have to eat a hat? Because okay, Epsilon won, you don't. Uh, but few. I think we should keep it going. Maybe just I'll eat like a, a little like baseball cap or something small. I think S our admin actually, baseball our, our admin has a, a baseball cap. I can eat that one. <laughs> just grab Very that one. True. Just li have a little knife and fork. I think there's one around here somewhere. I'll have a little nibble. Maybe. Just, just, maybe. just one piece. Just one piece of okay. a baseball cap if Millennium lose this one. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Please, the French, get behind Pulse. Mm -hmm. I need to see him eat a baseball cap. I think I could do it. I've got a pretty strong stomach. I feel like I could crack on through. I mean, I can go through, you know, Vindaloo's, anything. I can eat it. I can eat it all. Wow. Maybe I can eat myself a, a little bit of baseball cap. <laughs> Medium rare, <laughs> little bit of black pepper. I'd have it raw, to be honest. You'd have it any other way. Take it raw. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll have a little look at that one later. Let's talk about the social media, though. You saw it there. It's gone. And it's long gone, but do be sure <laughs> to hit us up with it at COD World League. While we jump on into the action using the hashtag CWLPS4. Who do you think is going to be picking this one up? And do you think Pulse can kind of, again, I was going to say break that curse and pick up a map win against Millennium? That tree would be an uphill struggle. But Vespa, M8, XR2, lots of assault rifles, and an SMG taken away. I say lots of. I think that high caliber looked a little bit like a man of war to me just for a second there, excuse <laughs> me. But uh, we are going to be seeing <laughs> the H60 and rapid fire follow. High caliber is very, it does it look pretty similar to a man of war. Um, you have to accept my apologies for that one. <laughs> I think it's a quick glance. However, just to touch on uh, things, in fact, I'll go into it in just a little bit later. Swanee's actually taking the HCX D car. Rapid fire goes Zao, M8 and XR2 from uh, Pleaser and Vezio. I was Ooh. just going to say Pleaser, um, obviously replacing Agony in the lineup as well. Uh, for all you French guys are like, hang on a second, where is the beast from Belgium? Um, the he's Belgian a, bulldozer. Yep, yeah, it's now a full French roster. Uh, with obviously Pleaser coming in. I'm taking a, a, a guess at that. I'm going to presume because I actually don't know where he's from. He's a Frenchie. He's a Frenchie. And uh, I mean, one of the f more, more intriguing kind of outcomes from that ban and protect was Flak Jacket yep. being taken away. That, of course, does change things up. The, remembering that both Semtex and Frag Grenade were available. And so this is going to be this is going to be chaotic. Yeah. But or Tommy. You, whenever you want to call it. What did you say, sir? Never mind. Never mind. Tommy. Opting for that annihilator, uh, we've dubbed him obviously the specialist of that specialist. Uh, but Madcat going for the war machine. He's not. I mean, Madcat's always been a tempest kind of guy. Flak jacket was banned. That's why he's chose it. Smart play. Oh, uh, Madcat, not just the skill, he has the brains as well. I, I can't believe I didn't think about that. We've seen already that just how quickly yeah. the war machine becomes completely irrelevant. I like it with flak jacket. And, and the, I doesn't look like Pulse realized. Yeah, Pulse haven't clocked onto it. But Madcat one step ahead in the Call of Duty brains if you like but um azox uh opting against scythe with a swanee kinetic armor on both sides he, so actually you know quite a big difference got tempest and heat wave for pulse and annihilator and war machine for the boys on millennium just running through those rosters one more time millennium tommy swanee jerd and madcat aka the god squad currently sitting in sixth place i believe on the leaderboards soon to change that um for them but 
Pulse trying to do everything different. Pleaser, Vezioc, Jays, and Azoc, Scythe, Heat Wave, Tempest, and Kinetic Armor. As these guys finalize their classes, they make everything perfect for themselves. What will we see going into this? I, I, I can see this only going one way, but I, I'm feeling it. It's underdog day. I can feel Pulse with a new member, Pleaser, um, causing them some trouble. Yeah, let's have a little look how this one does go down. I mean, you know what? Main main question marks surrounding Pulse is Pleaser. Yeah. Because we'll be seeing if he can be a crowd pleaser and see if he can turn things around. I was waiting for it. I was waiting for the plug. I thought it was going to be, is he going to please the... I thought, uh, you know what? <laughs> I'm not even going to say anything. F is he going to be a crowd pleaser machine? You never very well, maybe. He's a new name. It could be a surprise. We'll have a little look and uh, see if he can turn things Ooh. around. But on the other side of things, I mean, you've just got this, this scary, scary squad. Tom yes. Jared, Swanee, Mad Cat. Like, those are names that you fear when you jump onto a lobby, and it's going to be exactly what Pulse are feeling. Quaking in their boots. They're very stylish French boots, in fact. And we're going to be seeing if they can pick this one up now without the uh, Belgian man behind them. And, of course, one of the more recognized names in the Pulse roster taken away. It's going to be intriguing to see. Maybe, you know, Please has got a, a lot of kind of, uh, I mean, uh, going back to the boots metaphor, big shoes to fill. I like it, I like it. I thought you were going to say he's got a lot of pleasing to do. I thought he was coming for <laughs> I didn't go for a second another one. one. Not but worth, not worth. Stronghold hard point. You've seen it four times today. This is the final time. Can Millennium shut down um, Pulse? The French versus the British here. Uh, 250 points. Obviously, he's that score limit. Five, limits, five minutes on the clock. It's always a tongue twister, that one. Uh, and respawn delay <laughs> is disabled. Yeah, indeed. Five minutes on the clock. We're going to be seeing... And that one does play out. But uh, we've seen it played out every single time, guys. We're into our game five here of our five game day. It's going to be potentially the uh, ending with a bang. It does come down to Pulse, really. Millennium, you expect some consistency. So hungry for the win after sitting at one for one at the moment uh, after week one. This is a win that means a whole lot to Millennium. They cannot afford to let this one slip away, and they need to start strong. Let's have a little look then as this one goes off. Of course, spawning towards middle, those scrap points going to be battled for here on Stronghold. Yeah, start off with Pleaser. Uh, he went down very, very quickly. Madcap picking up a double does get taken down as well, traded, but the points going in favor of uh, Pulse here. Vezioc and Azox just raining nice. fire. Azox f favoring this uh, this man of war. Does have that grip attachment as well. Let's see what else he does have. ELO and stock. Uh, trophy system. There's his perks as well. Um, but 20 points. They're going to rack up here on this first hard point. And it does look like it's going to stop anytime soon. Where are Millennium? I'm sorry, where are they? Here they come. Three of them flooding into the site, and those 15 points are all there. Malkat, big connection on towards Vezioc. Tommy does the same this time, taking the scalp clean off Azok. Now, with seven of those seconds, they're going to start to rotate. And they realize, that, of course, it is just straight up into that mansion area. Madcat coming around the flank. Vezioc's already done a big step in the right direction for uh, the uh, start for Pulse. Let's see if they can continue where they left off in that middle area. I love how Millennium just got straight back into it just from picking up those scrap That's points. That's mad, you know. yeah. 17 to 21. Tommy, Swanee combining here. Vezioc trying to answer back here. Madcat, though, is on a three kill streak. Swanee's on a four. Madcat extending that now. Four kill streak for him and Swanee. See what Swanee's doing. He's just watching his back of this co teammate. One of the kind of strongest individuals from Millennium has only just got off the starting marker as it's Jerd. And he really hasn't done enough because, you know what? His team is doing it for him. Six for Madcat, six for Tommy. And now they're trying to seize control of the mansion area. Jerd. He's going to be hanging out towards that bedroom area just for a second before he himself is actually put to sleep as he's going to be taken down by Pleaser. Now we see again this exchange, 15 points and, and closing four pulse, and they're going to be look, looking to uh, stay with this one right on to the end as they're going to be trying to breach that 50-point mark. The rotate for this one doesn't come quite as easily. Yeah, Tommy shut down there on the rotate. These are the important kills when there's five seconds left. These are the ones where you don't want to die. Look what's just happened to Swanee and, uh, and Tommy. They both died on the respawn. They've spawned so far away now, and they've given that kind of hill almost straight away to Pulse, even though they rotated early. Yeah, early contestion, though. It's good to see them getting some bodies on it. I believe it was actually Tommy who just jumped straight on in. He doesn't care about the frags right now. He just cares about stopping Pulse from throwing too many bodies, stacking up on towards this hard point. It's a very tough one to hold, though. You have to remember just how many angles there are. Oh, I thought Madcat had him. Caught the heels instead and goes hunting with the RK5. He finds one on the ground. Oh, Pleaser playing the camo, just hitting that prone button and hoping for the best. And now we are going to be seeing Millennium try and climb a little higher. Yeah, with 25 points to go. Yeah, Azox 12 kills. He's top fragging at the moment. Jud really having a tough start. He's 4 and 10 at the moment. Not even got too many points for his team on the hard point. Dropping again, 4 and 11. Let's see if he can pick it up later in the game. But Tommy, Man of War in hand. 
with Swanee and Madcat. It, it seems for Millennium at the moment, they're using three assault rifles, not something that's really worked before uh, on Stronghold, but they're, uh, they're willing to change the game. Yeah, I mean, usually when you see so many assault rifles, you expect to see a whole lot of sidearm frags because when it comes in close, that's when the RK-5 really does kind of prove powerful. But talking of sidearms, we've got ourselves as an Annihilator. It's a rather pimped out sidearm. Let's see if he can do anything with it as he's going to be looking and expecting that war run. But he's turned around. Nice movement coming in from his opponent. His adversary does fall, though, and another. As he's starting to line them up, there's a third just to his right. And he still has three bullets in the chamber. Oh, that was a close one. Not enough. And now you can see venting his frustration, pulls out his fist, and it looks like it's Jerd's turn to open up onto the side. Yeah, Jerd uses that kinetic armor, only picks up one. Please are shutting him down. Uh, and 6 and 14, Jerd. Uh, I, th I think for me now, if, if Jerd steps it up, that's where Millennium take it. Yep. But that, that's kind of the game changing aspect. Tommy's 15 and 8, uh, the rest are pretty much neutral. But Pulse still have this lead machine. Yeah, this is. Uh... Is this happening? Is this real life? Is what you most definitely could say. Ten seconds and then for those kind of scrap points. And I don't think Millennium can afford to drop them. I think Jerd realizes that, like, I'm responsible for this. I need to get those last few points coming in. That's the last one. Then it's going to bring them to 68 as it does spawn towards the Money Hill. This is where things can get a little out of hand if Pulse can dig their heels in. But it doesn't look like it's going to happen because Mad Cat and have done a big step in the right direction. It comes down to Pleaser. The new blood on the team. He needs to connect these shots and connect them efficiently. He does, but he knows with that contested on his screen, there are two more around the corner and it's time for the warm machine. Yep, no flak jacket available. Mad Cat's going to shut everyone down. I think he used them so quickly we couldn't even see it. Does pick up two though and Millennium trying to get back in the game here as they close things down. 80 to 84, leveling things out shortly. They're going to be able to do it and Mad Cat's going to shut down. No, oh. he's not. That was the scythe as well as he does fall. Jerd picking up a double for himself. Has he opted to use an assault rifle? That is the question. Right now, Jerd's still picking up the Man of War. That's going to be his Hellstorm as the trophy system does manage to catch a nade. Hard point for him. Another second kill coming his way. He does have Kinetic Armor. Now would be the time to pop it if he wants to survive. Not going to happen. And he was just 50 points away, I believe, on his streak. Yeah, I mean, was that for a Wraith? Or I, I think it may very well. I honestly think... Mm, I doubt it. I, in fact, I doubt it. Look at his kills. 12 kills so far. I know, but he was so... I'm sure he was on a 6 kill streak. Nevertheless, though, he's still got his Lightning. He's still got his Hellstorm. Contestion comes in. But once again, Millennium, they just seem to be able to grind it out and always come back. It, it, you know, they start off weak, and they come fighting right back. I love this angle from Jed. He's right on the tip of it. If he just took a step backwards, he'd be out and would no longer be contested. But instead, he just holds the angle and realizes that zero, nothing is going down unless they challenge him. He's, he's confident in holding his angle, especially when you've got someone like Swanee just being so effective. Wow, with the Man of War. That's two down, and Jerd gets, gets a little kind of uh, frisky. Shouldn't have. Azox did find him, and now you can see Swanee is going to be pushed out of position, flushed away by Pleaser. Yeah, and uh, it really enables kind of the likes of Tommy, Mad Cat, really to get into the face. Mad Cat and Jerd seemed... Is Jerd using an AR? No, he's not. I was going to say Mad Cat and Jerd seem to have swapped, and yeah. could have been a wise choice. Jerd wasn't obviously finding it very comfortable. They're uh, obviously doing something well at the moment as they extend their lead more and more. Jason, please, are picking up a couple of kills. Tommy answering back, does see the head and shut down Beziog. That's a really important double kill. <laughs> Hello, Cerberus. Oh, whose is that? Uh, I, I, I mean, we'll soon find Tommy's out when it. it picks up a kill. It probably is Tommy's. He's oh, on a six kill streak. He's 24 and 13. And he looks like he could very well find one again. He's only 100 points away from it. That would be truly insane. That's 45 seconds and counting. He knows he's just got to play for those extra 100 points for his second Zerberus. That's, yeah. that's something to remember if he does find it. He's got trophy systems to stare at, but that's not what he wants. He just needs some blood. He's really... Always getting a little overextended for this one. This is it. This is the challenge. He gets it. That's Cerberus number two, please. As he picks that one up, a full set of streaks. And Millennium's lead has just grown exponentially over the last two hills. Yeah, and, and look at Tommy. 25 and 13. Seven kill streak. One minute 40 on the clock. That's 100 of the 176 for his team. And he does have the second service. One thing about Tommy is sometimes a little bit hasty. When he gets his Annihilate, when he gets his skill, score streaks, mm. he just he, he uses them straight away. I like the fact that he's not used his uh, service whilst that's all we're already wanting play. I, I like the fact he's been a bit more reserved um, with that. Wow. Azox, though, shouldn't him down. Yeah, and it's great to see the members from Pulse. You know, they're maybe not having the best game, but they're still fragging it and get, picking up kills in great capacity. They'd actually narrowly miss out on a double kill with that Hellstorm. The Cerberus still stands, and I wouldn't be surprised if he is going to be keeping that one uh, until the kind of the next hill round. What was that from Jerd? Hang on a second. Three bodies hit the deck. Madcap follows up, and Pulse have been forced back to those very distant spawns. Look how far away they are from the hill. Yeah. And that's it. I mean, the, the crazy thing is Jerd's trying to... <laughs> Why did I go away from him? Jerd just <laughs> pulling VMP kills across the map like that. We saw him have an, a pretty awful start. He's on a five-kill streak at the moment, 20 to 19, back in the game. Jerd obviously stepping things up. Oh, oh. my goodness. Jerd, stop it. 
Vesiok is really going to be kicking himself. That was a, a kill you cannot afford to let slip away. Now he's just 125 away from Hellstorm. He could get it. He's just got it. 50 points away from that one. Lightning Strike is going to try and find it with that. Just one kill is all he needs. He's making the calls for his teammates. Tommy, in the meantime, is getting more Annihilator kills. Five points, three points. He knows he just needs to hold this just for a second longer. And Millennium, they're getting dangerously close now. 220 almost on the board for this. And Pulse barely breaching 100. Yeah, Tommy's called in his Cerberus. Jurt is, re is really working towards this uh, this Wraith now. He's seen one. He's picked up the Hellstorm. Now he's 250 away from this raid. He's not going to have a chance to use it. That's what I. He, he's just using the hell. This is just fun and games now. I mean, tough start for him. Swanee and Tommy stealing the kills for him. Uh, but for me, 20 seconds left on the clock. It's only going one way. Millennium, though, they started off a little bit shaky. Yeah, a little bit of a slow start for them, I'd say. But it does look like they've kind of managed to uh, stabilize and stabilize quite fiercely at this point. I mean, you said already, if Jerd starts turning up, they've won it. And what did he start doing? He went on like a six or seven kill tear, slaying away through the uh, his French opponents. Look at that, though. Tommy does empty his clip. Nothing to find from that one. And you are going to be seeing just those remaining 10 points from Millennium. Elude them for now. Still two minutes for them to pick them up. But Pulse have got such an uphill struggle ahead of them. There's no absence of frags, though. Look at that scoreboard. None of them yeah. are really struggling to pick up the kills. It's actually the time on the hard point. Not one member of the Pulse side has got over one minute. And four members of Millennium have. Yeah, and Swanee is just about to tick over that one minute mark as he hits Look that. that. Uh, everyone obviously getting one minute for them. Really well played there from Millennium and, uh, and Jerd. Good to see him getting back into the game because I was a little bit concerned. Um, I mean, when I used to play with Jerd, he used to let his little brother play. Uh, sometimes it did annoy me. Um, I've got to say his little brother is pretty talented still. Uh, <laughs> but I think Jerd took the Jerd then. If you've got King Jerd, you've got Prince Jerd. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's a whole bunch of them to say the least. But uh, 26 and 20. Uh, really stepped it up. I think he was like 5 and 12 at one yeah, point. He's definitely completely turned that on its head to end up then uh, third on the uh, scorecard for him and for his team. And uh, Millennium do pick up win one in this best of five. You have to remember, Search and Destroy is coming up next. But yeah. you know what? Millennium, a bit of a slow start, but Pulse, they were, you know, given an advantage and they took it. They seized it. They ran with it. And I think that's something, you know, to their credit. They're definitely, like, they. you, you can tell that these guys are such strong individuals. Like, it's so obvious. It's so evident yeah. in their play. You see them go, like, 1v3, pick up three opening kills into a hard point. They've got the ability. It just seems, I can't quite pinpoint where it all goes wrong. And every single one went off. Like, Jerd had that kind of six spree, uh, six kill spree, should I say. S Tommy, two Cerberuses. Yeah. Mad, I mean, the only um, Mad Cat had his, you know, I think he had numerous three kill streaks. Swanee was very consistent throughout, but that's just Swanee. That's I mean, Swanee all over. Yeah. Uh, he has to hold those points. He'll be challenged by some machine guns sometimes. But, you know, I'm sure going into the next game, Swanee will have his point as well. Yeah. He'll have these kind of little moments, little sparks in the game. Little glimmers of, uh, of kind of brilliance yeah. from the boys at Millennium. But this one, of course, as we said, is a must win for Millennium. They cannot afford to concede another loss already. Kind of... Um, on the lower echelons of these, though, that top four team with that loss that they did concede in week one. They cannot afford to let it happen again. And so to do so, to best pulse, they have to do one better on infection, search, and destroy. That's going to be our next game type. And when you said already, we have to see something from Swanee on search and destroy. Is there anything that Millennium do really right on any, any, anything different on search and destroy? Or are they more of a kind of, kind of standard staple search and destroy team? How many times can I say search and destroy in a short period of time? Search and destroy. For me, uh, search and destroy for, for Millennium is they've all got the gun skill. Yeah. Um, so they, you know, in the one on one fights, they generally will win. Um, but the, just the, the game stance, they've played it for so, so long. Search and destroy has been title after title after title. So they've played it for years and years and years. Uh, and Tommy, being that kind of shot caller in the game, he'll be saying, right, guys, let's go B, let's go A. Default. Whatever he decides, yeah. I mean, Jerd's very much your roaming free, picking up a kill, insane reactions. Y you wow. Target. And, yeah, you could target. The entertaining one to yeah. watch. Swanee, your consistent one, which will always go in that power position, always get behind, you know, a rock or something like that. I mean, I could t I could tell you now what Swanee's gonna do on defense and attack, just because I, I you're gonna put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't, I won't. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna make this. Okay. On attack, he's gonna go to the right hand side. There's a little rock. He'll he'll kind of hop up a little bit and he'll yeah. just pre-aim over it to the, for the, the rock at the rock. back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on the opposite side, he will So on defense. I think he'll he'll go to yeah, on the defense, he'll go to the B bomb site again. He'll find a rock to head glitch behind. Okay. That's what he'll do. Yeah. Okay. Um Jerd, on the other hand, he'll be the one rushing through mid-map. But kind of going right back to your point initially, they all can have their individual moments in one-on-one -on -one gunfights. They're brilliant. But they have Tommy the Shot Caller, who's directing everything, um, even if they're one, you know, 1v2s or 2v3s. 
Yeah, and uh, just one final reminder as we're going into our second game of the series is what we've been asking you guys is which team has had the best performance of the day because that's so damn relevant after yeah. what a day we've had. So I want to get your answers. We want to be, be able to discuss your answers further a little later on in the stream. So let us know which team has had the best performance in your book. Throw that at COD World League using the hashtag CWL. PS4, and you can go ahead and do that right now so we can look through that when we uh, are dissecting this search and destroy game. Of course, it is just the second in a best of five series. We could be seeing three more maps if Pulse turn up and turn up in a big way. It's highly likely, highly likely, un it's unlikely. highly unlikely. There we go. There's, there's two little letters eluding me. <laughs> but uh, it's highly unlikely that we will, however, considering the form we've seen both Millennium and Pulse in after game one. Yeah, obviously, potentially only two more left. If Millennium, uh, you know, finish out this, how they've started it very, very strong, we could be seeing only two more maps. Probably, you know, the only 3-0. Uh, oh, no, sorry. Splice of just 3-0, very surprisingly. The second 3-0 of the map. Mind-boggling uh, 3-0. But, like, game week one, we saw four 3-0s. Like, even if you'd have said Splice versus Excel or something, I'd be like, oh, you know, oof, I don't know. 3-1, um, 3-2. Three, three, yeah. And then infused, 3-0 in favor of Splice. Man, oh man, it's going to be hard. You know what I'm going to do? We're going to have a quite a big discussion about this entire game day after this one, just to just kind of break down and explain yes. just how surprising this day has been and just how it kind of exciting it has been for us to cast and for you to watch, I sincerely hope. For now, though, it's time for Ban and Protect. We're going into Search and Destroy. It's going to be on Infection. And we're going to be seeing just how much more of a dent Pulse can make in the, the uh, Millennium roster. Of course, Madcap, Tommy, Jed, and Swanee. So far, Vesper and M8, no surprises. Overkill, again, no eyebrows raised, as we're going to be seeing that take away, just to evade the uh, Sniper and SMG combo. High caliber, all day, every day, and rapid fire should soon follow. Yeah. Um, for me, no, uh, no specialists have come into it yet. No tacticals either. Obviously, True. there only is three left. Uh, no overdrives, yeah. Azox and, uh, and Swanee bring into the ban and protect. I'm, I'm pretty sure these will be three bans. Um, I don't see any protects coming in anytime soon. No grip ban, no grip protects. Um, oh God, or EMPs. Yeah, EMPs. That's the one. Kinetic Armor's banned. Uh, Jay-Z is not a fan of that. So Kinetic Armor over Overdrive. They must have more of a problem dealing with the, the kind of the kinetic armor break and the active camo break. So when it takes that one away and the HXD does close that one out. So flak jackets are no longer as necessary. And we're going to be seeing, because let's not forget, you know, your, your grenades are still available. Yeah. HXD no longer available. So you have this balance to strike now is whether or not you want to go for your overclock or something else, your afterburner. We saw afterburner being a bit of a trend actually on infection. And so lots of in interest into the perk decisions that are being made once they've done their specialist draft. Oh, Madcag opting for something different. Um, you know, he's very much a Tempest player, a weapon-based player. He's rocking the heat wave. Um, on the other side, though, Veziot choosing Glitch, much like Tommy. What? Tommy? No, Annihilator? What de What year is this? What game is this? The, the only game mode he's going to use this is Search and Destroy. And Tommy, to be fair to Tommy, I've, I've seen him use Glitch before, but... He, he's so prolific with that that annihilator. It's it's kind of strange to see. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised. And this this again uh, needs to be taken with a pinch of salt. Where this could be an experimentation zone for Millennium. You know, when you've got an, a, a, an adversary, you feel like you can best, and you can best. You know, when you're operating at eighty percent capacity, you try something new. You experiment. This is a competitive environment, and it's the best way to really kind of work out what other meta changes you can make, both with, either in the ban and protect or in that specialist draft. So the rosters for you then. One more time. Pulse are bringing Vezioc on Glitch Pleaser, the new names of the roster, of course, replacing Agony. Picking up Overdrive, Jay-Z, or Jay's on the Heatwave, and Azox, or, or Azox, I guess, if we're doing <laughs> that, <laughs> with the Psychosis. Yeah, and on Millennium, you've got Mad C.A.T., uh, <laughs> Tommy, Jud, and Swanee. Um, mirror match here for the specialists. Uh, glitch, Overdrive, Heatwave, and Psychosis. Um, obviously, you know, the, the, the level match. playing field, we say it time and time again, but no surprise with Jerd uh, using the overdrive. I'm going to be interested in how, see how Pleaser plays this because I've not seen him play mm. Search and Destroy before. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be the question mark, isn't he, considering... I mean, I, I think we were always... Um, our previous story surrounding Verse Pulse was just how powerful Agony was, and in the past it was always, you know, the bridesmaid, never the bride. Same story here. This time, however, he's going to be disappearing off, and we have to see what Pleaser can do, the new name on the block. Maybe so there was a little bit of frustration on the side of Agony yet to succeed in the World League. But that spot's gone from him. And we're going to be jumping into the action very, very soon. Just doing those final class creation. Just working out, well, you know, this balance with perks. I think that's something I'm going to be intrigued to see. I'd love to jump in and, you know, have a little look about what decisions have been made. HXD taken away, but the nade's still available. 
we've already seen, I think, two or three instances of those str like lined up nades picking up early kills on yeah. infection, search and destroy. Uh, and the, the score streaks, I think, are really entertaining with Millennium because the Tommies and the Jerds, they always like, especially on the respawns, they try and like, you know, do they pull out wraps? Do they have a wraith available? They're not the, the kind of standard, standard ones. Yeah. They, they, they go for the game changers. They go for if we get a wraith, if we get wraps, it's over. And I'm not going to touch on the first uh, be half, point, now. half point that they played because uh, I think that might be one in a blue moon. But going in search and destroy Millennium and Pulse, going to be an interesting one, uh, as always with Call of Duty Esports here in Europe. But Search and Destroy, six rounds, five seconds for the plant, seven and a half for the diffuse, and one life per round. And uh, we're gonna go for the final time, Infection, Search and Destroy. Yeah, let's see if we can uh, kind of be inspired by anything special from Millennium, see if they've got any tricks up their sleeve, any aces in the hole. We're finding out as it's time for us to load on in Mana War for Jer. Let's run down this one just quickly. No SMG for him at the start of this. We see Pleaser and Co. We got a, what is that, Mana War, MA, Kuda, VMP. Nice to see some mixing, kind of uh, mixing and matching then in the absence of the M8 and the Vespa. Oh, they're going for an A portion. This could catch Millennium off guard. Just look at that, the split there. Who's that for Millennium? It's Mad Cat who's going to be able to watch the cross. Yeah, he's in that power position. So effective if he can play it absolutely perfectly. Vezioc, though, <laughs> is going to be holding out steady. Jerd on the rotate. I'm flicking on board with Jerd purely because he's got an assault rifle. He's going right around the back of this. Could be a big play here from him. Jerd and Tommy combined two down for the French. And that's going to be horrible. They're so paranoid now. They cannot escape. They know it. They've just completely wrapped around. Jay's the one that's actually escaped, managed to leave spawn. It feels like a complete role reversal because now he's being hunted down. Tommy. Oh, my God. That's two. They line on up. And now just one more. He cannot anticipate the third as they all come charging forth. And believe it or not, that third was Jerd. And it's going to be one to zero. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to look at. A, I mean, he picked two up from there. He, he was probably bless him. There's no way. He's, there's you wouldn't think no a third way. would come through. Yeah. Um, but you know, Judge. I like the way Judge just challenged him and just put him straight on his bottom. As uh, going into round number two, Millennium kick it off as they finish the hard point one and oh at the moment. But Judge, he is the one really starting off strong two and zero. Yeah, and it's good Ooh, to see. Let's see, see if Swanee does this thing on the rock. Second. Oh, yeah, this is what you predicted, dun, right? Dun, dun. He's oh, not oh, unlucky, mate. No, we'll save that. It, oh, we'll see it maybe a little later on. But for now, you can see he's just putting some suppressing fire down with the XR2, keeping them locked out. And this actually in itself could mean the plant go going down. They've got the trophy system in the site. The bomb can go down completely uh, kind of trouble free. I say that Azox has actually caused some trouble as Tommy does go down. Interesting as Swanee's trying to adopt a position. You can see he's just you trying to. You know, I said he tries to find a rock to hide behind. He's just, just lining it up at this point. <laughs> he's clever. It's the clever thing to do. Cover your body because you will not get shot through that. But Jerd on your screens. He's 3-0. He's picked up a frag this round. 3v2, though, in favor of Millennium. His job is to watch the back. I'm not sure why he's cautious of sandbags. His teammate's got that under wraps. He should just be watching this one. He's lucky to be alive and actually finds it with the MR6. There's a second man pushing him. Jerd too strong as he's now on a 4 for 0, if I'm not mistaken, if not more. 2, though, for Millennium. Pulse yet to get off the starting mark. Yeah, look at this. Slides in with what you would call a submachine gun. Actually, that MR6. Finishes the second one off with the Man of War. Oh, I love five the slow-mo ragdoll. That makes me so happy <laughs> as you just see the, the another man drop. And uh, I, think you I think you must be right. I think we've seen three already. Yep, that's five. Five for zero for him. And he's in a pretty good spot. Man of War. We've got a fist here from Vezioc. Has he got a weapon? I presume he has. There it is. Man of War. Jay's the XR2. Yeah, we've got four assault rifles. Look at this aggressive play, and they're predicting it. Pleaser, great pre-aim. Not enough to find the frag, though, because Swanee's already deleted one of them. Azox is now gone, put to sleep permanently, as Madcat does exactly the same to Jay's. And you just have to see what Vezioc and Pleaser can do to come back from this one. Look at the pressure they're applying. Millennium, they just want to get this game done. Done and dusted. Pleaser, let's see. If he can just make this a little bit more interesting, they're lining up again. What on earth is Millennium Oof. doing? They're having a mother's meeting over on High Rock, <laughs> but no. And 50 seconds left, and Millennium, they've just got all the time in the world. Please, uh, no chance of getting that bomb down. Throws out a smoke, but don't see much coming at this one. Yeah, uh, he potentially could have been really lucky and took two down there. He's going to ta get taken down by Swanee in that power position once more. I think this is going to be a very quick search and destroy. It I mean, yeah, it I seems that I'm way. stating the obvious. It's 3 0 in probably a matter of minutes here. But I just, a Millennium, they just seem so composed. They, they push together. They have no fear. It, it's kind of like that, you know, like the little child that has no fear at all, just running in yeah. uh, and just trying to take everyone down. The thing is, is this, this actually comes down to a philosophy that happens in a lot of competitive FPS is where when you have an adult team playing against, you know, the greats, is you have to 
demand respect. Pulse need to be playing like they, like Millennium are. They need to basically be picking up a couple of rounds very effectively. And I'll come back to that second because Vezioc's just gone aggressive. This is what I was asking for. This is exactly what the Doctor ordered. And look how effective it is. Madcap, the last man standing. He has brought it down into a one versus two. Actually, he knows exactly where that is. He's cooking up there. That could be a kill. He could bring this into 1v1. It's going to land in his top pocket. See you later, Azox. And see you later, potentially, please. Uh, he's going to go down. Surely, no hits. No! The no! Madcap! Oh, all of his nine lives oh. gone in one. It's three to one. And Pulse find a round. That, my friends, is map awareness. He had that. He, he had that. The, he'd already put a burst in him. He, ah, that was Madcat's for the taking. <laughs> and you know I said he had the smart play taking the war machine. <laughs> Madcat just made a very, very silly play. But, Black Ops 3, man. I love oh, it. I, I think, you know, maybe if he had Afterburn. I mean, he, he could have had Afterburner, maybe. Let's see what he was rocking. Uh, no, no flat flat check. Check But back on board with the French. They get the first round on the board, though. Like you said, the aggressive play style really went in there in their favor. Yeah, they just need to get Millennium kind of to understand and respect and not play this crazy no respect place. Currently, though, it looks like they're back to their old ways. Look at Millennium just pushing through middle. They've got complete control. Who is that? If you can just see on the map for a second, someone's going right around behind them. In the meantime, pleasure. Oh, well, Pleaser did get one. Jared, this, I think, is the one that's responsible for that. Look at this. He's playing an AR like it's an SMG. Yeah. And the, the good thing about Jared is he keeps going on the flanks, but it's such a long-range based game uh, map that you need to do it with an assault rifle. If he had an SMG right now, it'd be useless. Yeah, instead he's actually lining it up. He's going to be making one. a call to his teammate. Unfortunately, Madcat's there as well, which doesn't actually favor them because they're just going to have all eyes locked on this push. And hang on a second, Tommy. <gasps> that should have been his. The smoke was there. He's going to try and get one in the legs. He does. Jay-Z no longer standing. <gasps> oh, that should have been a second. But Azox RK5 does turn up in a big way. 24 seconds now. They need to close in. That defuse is a necessity at this point. Spots another one. What's he doing? Peeking. He's lucky to be alive. Ple 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 Pleaser is his name. And dying is his game. The defuse is going to be coming in. And Millennium make it four. Yeah, Jerd and uh, Madcap finalised things there, Jerd. Seven and one. For me, I, I was so excited when Tommy got that sniper. I thought he was going to pick up both, and he kind of dived in, um, you know, with aim down sight, and I thought he had it, but finalised here was, by Madcap. What was Pleaser doing there? Like, I mean, you, I, I guess he's a check in the defuse, but as soon as you see nobody on the bomb, you get the hell out of dodge. Yeah. You don't let them know where you are. Why challenge as well, surely? Exactly. Yeah. Like, if, if he'd have stayed on the rock, he'd have basically have taken another, like, five, six seconds off of the clock yes. just while them having to find him. And that's something you have to remember. The clock is your best friend once the bomb goes down. And it seems like we're going to be seeing a few shortcomings from that one to start things off. But we're looking to see, to see a fast play from Jerd. He's actually got the bomb, and he's already across to sandbags. This is nuts. Yeah. I, 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 I've watched Jerd every single round. I, I feel like I'm, I'm almost being a bit biased towards him. But it's so hard to not watch him, especially when he's 7-1. and one and he has things like that. No, bomb's gonna very fit. vulnerable now. Yeah. This, this is a round that Pulse could actually really not afford to lose in more ways than one. But with a bomb lose, they know exactly where it is. They know where the offense is going to be coming from. They really just need to sit down and wait. Could get the bomb down, though. It is pretty clear here. Um, he where does are they? Why do they have a man Tommy's at on the flank, though. What's going on here? He, he, he's just below. Oh, the, a just little gonna... triangle of heat coming out with Jays. And he does get a bullet in the bum. And you've just seen Madcap pick a one all down to Pleaser with this cooter. He's not in the best position. He's rotated to A, thinking the kill will be where the bomb goes down. But Tommy's uh, really sent him off guard as the bomb goes down at B. Pleaser has a huge amount to climb. Yeah, one of those is just going to be to his left. I don't know whether or not he's anticipating that one. He is going relatively unnoticed. Does pick up one with the cooter. And immediately he yeah. is responded by Tommy. No surprises there then. RK5 was all it took. One burst on two. And that's going to be five to one. Yeah, really clinical here. Tommy, again, just in uh, position. Smart you know. positioning. I mean, yeah. generally, we are just seeing a battle of the brains. Yes, there is a kind of there's a name component, but it is just being outbrained and outgamed by Millennium at this point. Absolutely. 5-1. Only see this one going one way. Uh, to be fair, the only round Pulse won was when Madcap made a huge mistake. Um, obviously, jumping off the map. Oh, I nearly forgot about that. <sighs> we shouldn't let him forget about that anytime nah, soon. That was funny. Just providing more entertainment That's as, right, uh, as, as Madcat does. He, he's one in a million now, Madcat. Now then, what you got for us, please? And no, not going to happen. Tommy straight away finds the head and a second as well, shredding through the assault. And that's a third. He's lining them all up. There's one man. It is the bomb carrier. We have to see if Jay's is going to steal this ace away from Tommy because it doesn't look like likely he's going to pull out 
the uh, SVG and the VMP has got them both. Jace draws blood and it makes it very clear that there's potentially could happen the glitch! Oh, oh Chomi! He brings it home in style with the glitch frag onto Jace. We get to, to, get to watch it again in slow-mo here. He gets, catches a glimpse, catches a whiff of his opponent and the glitch picks it up and does so very, very stylishly. That was his 10th as well. Yeah, uh, Tommy, a big fan of the glitch. He, he's a, he's a two, kind of, two special kind of guys, the glitch, the annihilator, uh, but he, he, he always uses the glitch just at the right time. And yes, he's 5-1 up. He's in a one versus three, you know, almost using it for the sake of it, but he uses it always just to his advantage. He kind of knows where he's going. That's my yeah. problem with the glitch. I use it and just pray. <laughs> I'm like, hopefully I'll, uh, I'll go in the right place. Tommy always seems to, and I'm sure that's not down to luck. I think it just comes down to, to playing with the glitch enough that you have an understanding of like, you just get a, a second kind of nature. A second nature, you know, kind of where you're going to be roughly as it has been kind of, there's been a lot of people trying to theory craft it, trying to work out like the exact, like is it steps, is it time? Yeah. You just have to go ahead and cross your fingers, cross your toes. That's what I do. And close your eyes. And of course, people getting in contact with us on Twitter, you do as well at Cod World League. Brett Stevens says, I can tell you what was not the play of the series, if he's not going for that second pointer. That's true. Uh, quite putting a bit of a spin on it himself. I like that. We asked obviously, what was the moment of the series? Yeah. Um, you know? I like that. Turn it on his yeah. head, Brett. 10 points to Gryffindor for you. What's up next? We have uh, Othom saying, Hawkey falling off the map was the <laughs> highlight. <laughs> Again, now Madcat. Now Madcat's followed, followed suit, but we have seen constant is instances of where the uh, Black Ops 3 movement system really does test everyone. Even the professional gamers are slipping off. Yeah, I, and it's something that happens all the time. I'm trying to think back to, to my moment of the series. I mean, for me, uh, for this one, let, let's just talk about Millennium Mima. I'd have to say, I'd say Mad Cat falling off. That was the funniest moment for me. Yeah, funniest moment. Definitely not the play of the series. No. Um, but m Tommy's ace. Tommy's ace, which was yeah. very, very stylish. I think, it, was that his own smoke as well? Just rolled that out? No, that was the enemy. Two. The enemy used oh, it. Even Tommy better. had the thermal, and it was like, you've just given me yeah. like free kills. I guess I'll Thank take Thank you very much. I'll you. take that one. And that one. Oh, and I'll take this one and this one as oh, well. Oh, glitch. Okay, go. here we go. Oh, you're just making me use it. You're making me look good now. Yeah, um, it does look like this underdog story has come to an end, though, with Millennium versus Pulse. I think the uh, the jig is up, and we're going to have to accept that just some of these games are going to go the way we would expect. Pulse just really have not yet proven their worth, not like kind of made it clear that they are a team that de that re kind of um, demand respect. Because this is what I was the point I was trying to touch on. A bit difficult to go into detail when you're in middle of a game, but one of the kind of concepts that always comes up and crops up is when you have the, the you know a strong team, one of the best, the top two, top three. Mm. You you can play with this air of confidence and it's kind of no respect play is what it's been du dubbed right where you rushed and you saw what happened there like yes. three four players in millennium just charging forward in search and destroy and because you think you can win the duels you get away with that and it's that kind of play that you are not going to win against when you're pulse you need to make them play properly and to do so you have to start being able to uh, find a yeah. way to deal with that no respect play it's and a really tough balance it, it's really hard for, for for pulse as well i mean if anyone's knowing the french is tommy he's played with them for years uh, and he knows almost how they play and he's playing what we would call maybe um you know you've got your vitalities your ldlc kind of yeah. matching up now um but pulse they just seem a step behind they've got a roster change they've brought pleaser in maybe that's a factor but for millennium they have just done what uh, what we all know and love uh, and they're basically showing us how to play card if you want to learn from the best watch these guys yeah it just seems like another day in the office then for the god squad so far two to zero could it be three to zero i would not be too surprised as we're going to be going into our third map slash game type it's going to be breach uplink i believe uh, yep. we've seen a great deal of it we've seen some um, honestly I still seem to be kind of com like a big convert to Uplink. The more I cast it, the more I realize just how many incredible plays you can see kind of take shape and form over the course of Uplink. And I mean, we have seen some, as I said, questionable plays. I think it was Brett who came in and just said, not going for that two pointer could have cost him fused the game. Yeah, and, and for me, uh, and, and for you especially, it's kind of this, this Uplink kind of metric, it's just changing all the time. And we see, you know, you see standard rush, pick up the drone, run through mid map, score. But then there's the right, the left, then there's the passing ability. Then, then there's, there's the like, the saving your afterburner so you can get yourself right above for the two-pointer. It doesn't matter. Like, okay, great, I'm above it now. Are you going to kill me? Doesn't make doesn't make a difference. Yeah, and it's it's impossible for them to do anything. And we saw uh, Splice utilizing that very very well. We saw LDLC doing the same, and uh, and presumably we're going to see Millennium, or. Could we see a bit of an upset? Could we see Pulse uh, going into this one? The stronger Mad Cat banning that Vesper. M8's taken away, of course. Uh, and we'll jump on board. Rapid mm. fire. Very, very standard stuff. 
Yeah, I mean, so far, so good. Uh, Uplink, you expect to see uh, a, usually one or two specialists taken away. Kinetic Armor can be so influential if it is left in. However, you know, it is, of course, for both sides if you're willing to bring it into the gameplay. Doesn't look like Azox wants to be seeing any overdrive, though, as he's going to snatch that one away ASAP. Up next, I mean, you've got Concussion and Flashbangs. Would you say they're less influential and less of a kind of con constant presence in the Banner Protect in a game like I Uplink? Just I think that it's two bands, and if you're using two bands for just maybe, you know, putting on tack mask, uh, I think you can get away with it. I just think when they're not here, you've got to use tack mask. Much like, you know, it, it, you know your flak jackets and your HCXDs. Yeah, you can it, force it. There's just, there's a counter to everything. That's what is amazing about Call of Duty is, if you say, I'm using this, I would, no doubt, but I, I'd be able to say, right, well, if you're using that, I'm using this. There's always a counter yeah. to everything, and that's what it makes it so fair. Wow, a third specialist. Yeah, overdrive. Can I, I think this this was what we saw previously, actually. But where does this leave way. you with your with your specialists? None yeah. of that protection, really. Mm, I mean, you've got your... There's no protection. There's more kind of your heat waves, your breaking ones. You go offensive. Yeah. Uh, and that's where oh, Madcat's gone back to basics with his Tempest. He's a big fan of that. Interesting to see what Please goes with. Um, not You're not going to be seen. seeing too much, um, like, kind of flame break, would you say? Or fire break, excuse me. You might see Heat Wave. You wouldn't, yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking Purify. Like, that's just never really going to be effective. The, yeah, the only time I've ever seen it used in uh, kind of an uplink CTF was Jerd, actually. It was on one which uh, I think was on a Stronghold a very long time ago. Um, but I wouldn't suspect you'll be using or seeing that. Oh, Jared, vision pulls. Okay, not the, not the first time we've seen it. It is going to be a bit of a curveball, though. And uh, a bit more experimentation from Jed. We'll be seeing what he does with that. Swanee back to basics, as you said, with Madcat onto the scythe. These two, they've got specialists that work and they've stuck to them. Yeah. Sticking to their guns, quite literally. Yeah, I mean, you know when you talk about Millennium, their slain ability, you can see when it comes into Breach or Blink or, or any uplink, any respawn, Tempest, Scythe, and Annihilator. They're just... <laughs> You know when you, you just you know if you go into a, a public right. game of Call of Duty mm. and you're like, oh these guys look good. Just imagine being on a pulse now and just thinking, I've got to go up against Mad Cat, Swanee, Tommy. Like it's scary. It, it, is. it is scary, but they've got to believe in themselves. They've got to go into this game thinking, you know, we can win. Otherwise, you know, the, you'll you'll get what you think. Well, if I you mean, think the, you're gonna lose, yeah, you're you right. will. The game is lost before it even starts if you have that mindset. And yeah. it's and you know what? To be fair to Pulse, when you're two 0 down, you've already experienced it twice. It's so hard to keep that mindset. Mm. And that's what that's where the real the great teams start to establish themselves is because they can have that mindset. They can overcome ridiculously stacked odds. That, that's what I love about Epsilon. I mean, talking to Raid, he is so, so confident every single game, no matter what. I mean, if I put Epsilon against Optic right now, let's yeah. just, I mean, theoretically here, I, if I could just ask Raid, what do you reckon the score would be like? It's going to be 3 0. Gonna, we're going to 3 0. No like, problem. And it's going to be, he's just going to do it with ease. And I like it. it it's it's kind of, it can be seen as cocky, it can be seen as, you know, a little bit arrogant, but. You know, that's that's the mindset you've got to have. Tommy's always been the same. Tommy's always been kind of the, this player where he knows he's going into every series and he's very, we can take this. You know, he doesn't see anyone as better than him. Yeah, we'll be seeing just how far they can push this one then as uh, we are going to be seeing. Just waiting for Swanee to finish that class up. Then we're going to be going into the specialist. It's good to see, though, Veziok with the response as we'll go for those rosters once more. For the Pulse, then, we do see Play Pleaser on Annihilator. I keep wanting to still call him Pleasure. As, um, <laughs> it's, it's a pleasure close. watching him. It's a, indeed, it was. He was sitting at the top of the scoreboard for his team in his defense. Azox on Scythe, Jay's on Psychosis, and Veziok responding to Jerd's Vision Pulse pickup with his own. Yeah, and uh, we're going to finalize things. Veziok is going to be the last there to change his score streaks. He's ready now. Eight green ticks across the board. It's game time. Three, two, one. Let's have a little look how this one does go down then. Breach uplink is the game type. Already we see Millennium 2 to 0. This could very well be the last game of the day unless Pulse can change things up. And I'll let Phil walk you through once more what uplink does provide. And uh, I'm I assume you picked it up by now. But if you are new, one more time. Thank you very much, Alex. It is score limit unlimited. Five minutes on the clock. Respawn delay five seconds. And of course, Breach, the rooftops of Cairo. As a, as a one famous man once said. <laughs> Indeed he did. Let's have a little look, though, to see how favorable this can go. See if we're going to be crowning any pharaohs here on the rooftops of Cairo. We do have King Jerd. We'll be seeing if he can do much. We have kind of gave him a lot of screen time beforehand, but you can see a lot of ARs. Did I just see three Mana Wars? I think you did. Okay. Um, 
Let's see how this one plays out then from Lenny, bringing in a whole lot of assault rifles. It worked for them before on Search and Destroy. This time, you can see Azok trying to get the opening, and he does. Look at this start for Pulse. Every, always no absence of frags for the boys from France. Yeah, please are getting in there straight away. Trying to get on board with someone just near that drone is impossible because the trade's coming in. Kill after kill. And talking to kills, Jay's picks one up for himself. Kuda with his using. It looks like long barrel, fast mags, and quick draw. Like it. Oh, and he's on a tear, but Jurd shuts him down. Let's see what Jurd's doing. Uh, two and one, two, two. He falls. Tommy trying to answer back. Please, uh, um, shutting him down. Tommy, you're in a bit of trouble. You're going down there. Um, and the drone is going to be played in by Pulse only for the one-point play. Come on, someone who's alive. I w right, I've got Jay's note. He's dead. Who isn't going to die on me? Madcat, you are not going to die. Jurd has that drone. Three and two. Uh, uplink Ooh. available. Four minutes, though. It looks like he's going for this wall run. Oh, I like it. Getting away from him. He did. He must have seen that there. Okay. Oh, I mean, that was been actually kind of scary for the boys at Pulse. And already, they picked up that early one-pointer. It has just kind of w awoken the beast. Let's see if Millennium want to try and find themselves a rebuttal as it's going to be reset straight on back to middle. Exchange of frags, and now we're going to see Jerd. He's going for that left-hand side, and it, it makes t total sense considering Tommy was there. Say past tense because he's going to force him to go for the one-pointer. Jay's with a second, but there's the response. Great lineup, great movement, and a great return. One for one as we're in that first half here on Uplink. Yeah, Madcat, Swanee, and Tommy are just like running around slaying. Jerd's left on his own to play this kind of uh, this objective, if you like, and it's, it is back to basics. It is the God Squad kind of all combining, doing what they do best. Jerd has got the drone again. He's opting for this palace run. Just going to drop the drone where it is, though, because he's not got his team surrounding him. He hasn't got the support. But as you see on the minimap, all four players from France pushing that middle. Jerd's kind of just eluding the guys here, just evading them. Mm. He's going to play this slowly. Yeah, and it's kind of nice to see the change of pace. He's been waiting for that player to push AC. It was Azox. He's now down. That opens up middle, but no, pulls out his fist at just the wrong moment. That's going to cost him. Trying to go kind of uh, Rocky style. Didn't work out. Swanee pockets himself a double, though as Fezziox considering picking up that drone. It's a scary prospect, though, considering just that there's a man on the other side of the building, and everything hits a bit of a standstill. There comes the challenge, and look at look who picks it up. It's going to be Jerd, and he could very well go for the one-pointer. He was the man behind the magic in the first time, waiting for his teammate, and his teammate was Tommy, keeping him safe. And it looks like we're going to be seeing the same run yet again. Lines it up. One, two, three, and that's going to be a potent... Oh, oh no, he just must have just completely overshot it, and that's going to be reset. It will be reset indeed. Uh, for me, uh, interesting one is how low the scoring is. How I really thought would have thought either side would have kind of taken this game yeah. by the scruff of its neck and you know put a few two pointers in by now. But really, each team matching up against each other evenly. Madcap makes one kill again. Even Stevens traded out. Swanee's going to try and pick up him. Swanee doing what Swanee does, putting as much space between him and the enemy as possible, and then now gunning them. Yeah, we see if he can outgun. He's actually get tagged up and forced to back up. It falls to Tommy then to keep that drone controlled in middle. He does so with the RK5. There's Swanee again doing exactly what they needed to do as the middle is now controlled. I think he got the, the kind of call as well about where the ple pleaser was, and it should just be an easy two-pointer. I say two-pointer. Oh, there's this man there. Changes his mind the last second, realizes there's two points there. No point taking the risk, and instead just going to go ahead and take the uh, the two points. Yeah. Excuse me. And then Madcat just backed off. Interesting one, Madcat. Oh, that was unfortunate for Pleaser. He found the drone in his hands when he didn't want it. Madcat could, could go for the two-point play. All he needs to do is jump, and no, Jays takes him down. Let's see what he's doing because he's not opted to pick up the drone. Looking on the mini-map, it's going to be a safe return for Pulse. They're opted to push this right-hand side. Jays going okay. for the impossible. Don't try and take Swanee or Tommy off that head glitch with a, with a Cuda. A very silly thing to do, but he wisely backs off. Yeah, now his, his job is just to be the bodyguard. He is the entourage to this drone, and it's not going to be working out nice because Swanee's repositioned. Swanee is ready to go. The Annihilator is out, though. That was Annihilator v Tempest, and Annihilator did prevail. Swanee's angle is good, though good enough. Certainly, Jerd finds it as well. Two for him, as that drone surely is going to be loose once again. Jerd scoops it up, and now Swanee is the one to break. He's on the move. It's rare to see, but here comes Swanee. Bodyguard Swanee, and he can be effective in any scenario. This time, looking to clear out the enemy spawn. Yeah, for me, this is really, really important. Big play, two down one and that is another one point play uh, from Jerd being thrown in as the whole of Millennium Fall it's not going to affect them though because they're in the enemy base this is what I'm talking about if you're so far pushed up you have the time to respawn let's see if Pleaser can do anything with the last 14 seconds this was the route we saw being so effective in the previous games and it looks like he's going to go try for the melee what it should have happened Jerd laughs it off with a melee of his own tries to get it as far out of the dodge as he possibly could does get it on the roof and all
all good in the hood. That's going to be three to one then. And Millennium with his first half win, three to one. I mean, that's not that's not hard. That's a two point no. equalizer. I mean, we could that's we so really easy. could change it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can get right back in the game. For me, one thing that I would say is. The, there is a preferred side on this map, and Millennium were on the non-preferred side, but they still yeah. took that 3-1 uh, lead. For me, Millennium, what they need to do, they need to get Swanee on that middle hut, looking at Palace. They need to get Tommy pushed up towards Top Broken, and then Jurd and, uh, and Madcat just going from back and two. And I can see them... Excuse me, I can see them doing so. Um, but the men to watch, please, a top fragging for his team. Good replacement for Agony. Obviously proving his worth, but can he shut down the boys of Millennium? Wow, great movement from Jordan. It doesn't Emma kill Madcat found two as well. Look at these, just taking it in turns. Two each as Madcat's going to be walking this one in, you would assume. Look at this, this whole four-man push. They're going to be guiding this one home. Vision Pulse does become available, and it does look like Millennium are going to be able to pick just the one. Not taking any risks with this one, but the bodies are piling up. Swanee, he knows there's a man just on the other side of that doorway. He doesn't have a sidearm available instead pulls out the fists in celebration as he just managed to just get his team a little step closer to victory yeah he does have that sight though is he gonna challenge he's got one to his left he does take one down that's a good trade for him in a great position Jurd has the drone he likes to melee walls we've seen this in previous Pulse. games and uh he's gonna back off Maybe, just maybe, he wasn't willing. Like, he, he's going to be saving that pulse for when he needs to break, when he needs to be in that role that Swanee was. Instead, we're going to be seeing what well, looks like Jer just taking his time, preparing himself for the long run. No, or not, waiting just for that a break from his teammates. But please, just cause a little bit of havoc. Mad Madcat's going to step up, as does Tommy. Now that's surely going to be the one point. We caught a glimpse, but his teammates done one better. Madcat saves the day, and Millennium extend their lead. 6 1. Yeah, I mean, Jer's running this drone, and he's doing it so well. But when you've got Madcat and Tommy behind you, and Swanee just kind of raining fire down on the opposition, it's, it just makes it so much easier for him. Pass comes into Great play. And that's gone to Azox, I believe. And that, oh, it's a one-on-one. -on -one. He's going for the one-point play. Is this a wise choice? It's not. He overshoots it. I thought that when he threw it out. I mean, the drone is a lot different than previous titles. The drone is a lot more, um, hor it goes a lot more horizontal, if you like. Yeah, and there comes the Vision Pulse. Fezioc now completely noted. And look at that combination of both Vision Pulse and Scythe. Anybody that was anywhere near Swanee has been mown down, cut down to size. And we have to see what the remaining French players can do with the three minutes left on the clock. Tommy's going for the route. This is, of course, that favorable route. You can see a lot of two pointers, a cheeky one if there is presence there. But Madcat's keeping it nice and safe. He's getting himself up nice and high. He goes for the full run. That's two. And that's going to be a scary 8 1 deficit now. Pulse need to pull something out of that magical hat and very soon. Yeah, 8-1, Tommy looking very, very strong for me. Really important play there was, uh, if you just if I have a look, Tommy's definitely got that off afterburner. It enabled him to recharge that... Um Thrust. That thrust, that was the word I was looking for. Who's got the drone? It is Jerd. Let's see whether he can extend the lead. 8-1 at the moment. Go over the one-point play. I love how he's so confident in throwing that. He's obviously been practicing that kind of game stance. And he's just going back for more. It's just a relay. <laughs> if he gets this one again, that's going to be completely ridiculous. He is going to be challenged out towards Flowers. Oh, he throws it into his opponent's hands and pushes him! <laughs> oh, I thought he got it. No, that could have been the play of the day. As that would have been just like, you take this for a second, thank you. Fist to the face, fist to the face. Yep. Didn't quite happen. His teammates did the work for him, but is sitting at 9 1. Pulse, no, it's over. But Millennium want to make this stylish. It looks like Tommy's got himself for. Oh, I thought he was just going to throw it straight out of play. He has done. He's thrown it to his mate. That's gone to Jerd. It's a manual pass. He's picked it up. I thought he was just throwing it out what? of bounds. He just threw it over that, that rooftop. So, great play <laughs> from Millennium. Uh, they are completely throwing a spanner in the works to Pulse. We considered it throwing straight out for the reset, but little do we know, they keep on scoring. This is going to be another one from Millennium, surely. He's just going to bounce off, go for two. <laughs> It's a great movement from Tommy. Uh, not enough fragging coming out from Pulse. Yeah, and, and Swanee, Swanee what doing what Swanee. This is, this is what we meant. Once they get in this kind of rhythm, uh, they shut it down. And they, they've just got the... Oh, Jerd's doing it. He's going over the top. I know what he's doing. He's going to go for it. I'm excited. And he's going <laughs> to not bounce in. That oh. sound effect. <laughs> oh, I, was, I was waiting into anticipation. I was wanting him to throw it. And he didn't. He just hovered there and just teased me. Jared. Vision Pulse isn't going to save him in that exchange. It's oh, Jay's yeah. to take him down. One minute. It's quite literally impossible, mathematically impossible for them to overcome this at these odds. Instead, we get to just watch in awe as Millennium look to extend their lead. Swanee realizes he was a little too far away from that one. Yeah, I couldn't believe Swanee actually had the drone in hand. I was kind of worried. Uh, has Swanee <laughs> gone insane? not even know how to fire it off. <laughs> He's like, what do I do, guys? How Hang do I do this? Hang on a second. I haven't got my Man of War. I haven't got a, a gun which I can just destroy people with. Uh, but no, like you said, mathematically impossible. Jay's is going to try and get a point on the board. Does get taken down. But really, a clinical showing from the boys of Millennium, the God Squad, as they've been dubbed here, they suffered a loss in week one, coming back strong. 
Can they get more than 16 points, though? That's infused record that currently. Is, I mean, the current U European World League record. 25 seconds, though, and it doesn't look like they're going to be able to do it. They'd have to get a kind of a two and a one very, very quickly just to play it level and still no sign of that one as they're keeping this one under lock and key. The vision pulse from Veziok is going to give them absolutely zero info. And we know just 10 seconds left. Maybe just one point for dignity. Not going to happen. Swanee <laughs> shakes his head, puts a stop sign out on towards AC. And we just have to watch the clock kind of time out before we say goodbye to Pulse and another loss on the board for them. It's the win then for Millennium. 3-0, consistent style and consistent fragging from Madcap. Breaching 30 here on uh, Breach, believe it or not. Yeah, 31 and 15 over that two kill death ratio. Obviously, we saw Zed. He had the 1.8 over week one. They're going to be interesting to see how that pans out uh, after week two. Madcap justifying why he's in the God Squad here at 31 and 15, but it doesn't top Millennium, uh, sorry, Infuse, they, they won 16-2 with a 14 point game difference, only 12, unlucky Millennium. <laughs> <laughs> unlucky, but still lucky enough to pick up that win they needed that one, we said already, that's a must win for Millennium, a team that really want to be contending for that top two spot. Now you can see how the standings have affected that one and they've taken a big leap and a big step in the right direction to join the likes of Splice and Vitality, Two of them, of course. In fact, excuse me, Vitality starting the day in the same vein as Excel and Infused with that 2-0. Both conceding a loss today. Yeah, they're still in the sixth position, but six to second, all is on 2-1. Yeah. So tomorrow, when we see maybe some of these teams play each other, I'm sure that will happen. I don't know what they are, but I'm sure we'll touch on them in just a moment. Um, I, I think Millennium, you know, this is the rise of Millennium. We've seen them. I think they, they, end, they were at the worst at like seventh, and they'll be sixth. They'll be climbing back. But for me, the only one standing out is Epsilon on that 3-0. Yeah, that was the most standout result. Let's just go ahead and recap the day. And first of things first, we had a battle for that French number one spot. Vitality were already defending champions of that one. Definitely the number one French team until LDLC turned up and turned up in a big way. This win was convincing. 3-1 in favor of LDLC. Xyla turning up, Xerox, they were all there. And they all de kind of demonstrated that they, this, this battle for French supremacy is not going to be easy. Yeah, going on to the 5.30 matchup. XL fan favourites uh, from Britain here um, went in against the underdogs, which were Giants. Giants, massive, massive congratulations there for them. Getting off uh, to a board. They got a win under their belt. 3-2, very, very long series, drawn-out series. Definitely my man, uh, my map of the day. Mm -hmm. um, and then in 7 o'clock, we saw Epsilon versus TCM. Yeah, that Giants win, I mean, especially considering they didn't have a map win. They managed yeah. to find three to pick up that series. Really great stuff from the Spaniards. Splice <coughs> versus Infused was a 3-0 victory to Splice, no less. Infused, a team who were yet as yet undefeated at the start of the day and now going to have to kind of sit in sorrow and wonder where it all went wrong. Yet to make an impact versus Splice. Perhaps we're going to start seeing a bit of a rivalry brewing between these two British rosters. And rounded out the day, if you just tuned in, you missed it, but Millennium versus Pulse was a quick one. 3-0, to zero, one of the fastest search and destroy games we have seen in a while here at the Call of Duty World League for Europe. What's coming up tomorrow, I hear you exclaim. Phil is going to let you know. Oh, and I'm excited just looking at that, that that first one. Infused versus XL. They both had really good starts. They both suffered a loss here in Play Day 3. That's going to kick it off. Do not miss that one. That is going to be a phenomenal game. But at 5.30, it doesn't stop there. Splice versus Epsilon, both coming off victories today. Uh, who will obviously take that tomorrow? Yeah, 7 o'clock, Giants versus Millennium. Can Giants continue down this path of success? It's going to be definitely a tough p opponent for them to overcome after their victory versus Excel today. Vitality versus TCM coming up at 8.30 tomorrow. We're going to be seeing whether or not the French roster can recover after their loss to LDLC today. And uh, then rounding out the day with LDLC Pulse. Again, a, a French matchup. I mean, if LDLC can beat Vi Vitality, you would expect them to beat Pulse. And we still are yet to see Pulse pick up a win so far in the World League standings, and that's something that they're going to be looking to break at ASAP. But, uh, of course, it's not just European Call of Duty that's being played today. Yeah, I've got upcoming matches here. North American division, you're going to see FaZe Clan taking on Team Envy. Now, that is one I'll be tuning in for. Even though I've just spoke about a lot of Call of Duty, I'll be seeing that game. Apothean Esports taking on Team Calibre shortly after, and then Optic Gaming taking that's a on big game. Rise. That is a big game. And finalizing things, I mean, it just doesn't stop. Complexity versus DT Esports, that's one. I mean, they're all fantastic matches to watch. They're all coming down to it, but um, don't go anywhere. Obviously, a lot more Call of Duty coming your way. 
Yes, indeed. And that's actually going to be coming up in about 10 minutes' time. If you're sitting there, if you just tuned into the stream, you're like, what? It's ending, man. That's not enough. Or if you've been here since 4 o'clock and you're just a Call of Duty <laughs> diehard, much love to you. But there is more Call of Duty coming your way. The guys over in North America, across the pond, are going to be coming and uh, taking our space in about 10 minutes' time. So you guys can go grab yourself a cup of tea, have a bath maybe if you're feeling a bit sweaty oh. after all of that, hot under the collar after all that Call of Duty action. But for now, I think it's time for us to say goodbye. Any closing words on our underdog day? I mean, I was going to say, it has been underdog day. And Millennium coming back, obviously hitting that 3 0. For me, just excited for play day number four. And literally, it all starts tomorrow. Like Machine has said many times before, your Tuesday and Wednesdays now, that's Call of Duty Day. That's COD, gay, COD Day and COD Day. I like it. Uh, Monday, COD Day, COD Day. Thursday, Friday. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. That's how we're going to actually change the calendar eventually. And you can see the times everything starts. Of course, the European is in Central uh, European time. We're looking forward to seeing you guys then tom tomorrow around the globe. More Call of Duty, but more to come as well <laughs> this evening as it's time for us to say goodbye. North America starts in about 10 minutes, guys. We'd hope to see you in the stream. And from everyone in Europe, see you later.